You had rededicated your life to the Lord, too. Yeah, he had done a lot of recalculating for both of us. Yes, he had. And you, you were in, I think, in Chicago. And what were you doing there? You was in Hinsdale? I, I was the director of the radiography school, the x-ray school. Okay. And my wife was there as a nurse recruiter and intensive care nurse. Wow. And, and that's been a lot of years ago. But it's amazing. And, and, and the thing is, Tom's parents came to our church. And they hadn't changed at all. And I was, I was up on the, uh, the rostrum there, and I saw them. And I'll never forget that when we got done, I wanted to, I wanted to find out where you were at. And I went up to them, and I said, um, hey, aren't you Tom Waters' his parents? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, you probably don't remember me. But um, Tom and I were really <laughs> yeah, The first words they said was, oh, yeah, well, we remember you. <laughs> Uh, they don't forget that easy, but um, that's when I ask about you and uh, what you were doing. They say you were out in Montana, yeah. and, that, uh, and I said, Montana, what in the world would he be doing out in Montana? They said you were selling real estate. They didn't say you'd given your heart back, Lord, that you already had for years. Yeah. And, um, and that's where we're going to pick up. We've got to take a break, but that's where we're going to pick up. Moving out to Montana, your ministry, what's it all about, and what are you doing? So don't go away. We're going to take a break. I hate taking these breaks, but um, we've got something exciting to show you, and we'll be right back. Welcome to the last study Bible you'll ever need. The new Remnant Study Bible has all the study aid serious Bible students have come to expect, like book introductions and outlines, an extensive concordance, over 40,000 cross-references, words of Christ in red, maps and charts, but with hundreds of other study Bibles on the market, the Remnant Study Bible stands head and shoulders above the rest. Not only because it's everything you've always needed in a study Bible, but because it takes studying the Bible to an entirely new level. From the hottest pen since the Bible prophets, the masterful commentary of E.G. White is now included alongside the New King James Bible text. As you read, these thought-provoking nuggets stand out from the main Bible text and offer spirit-filled insight to bring text to life in an inspiring and practical way. If we stopped right there, this Bible would be an invaluable resource to every home. But keep watching, we're just getting started. The Remnant Study Bible offers extensive study tools that not only help you understand, but also enable you to share these truths with others in a whole new and effective way. Feel confident as you share on topics such as the prophecies in Daniel chapters 2, 7, and 8, and the 2300-day prophecy. See the plan of salvation plainly revealed in the sanctuary and study the miracles and parables of Jesus in a deeper way than ever before. Remnant has teamed with Thomas Nelson Publishers, working together for over a year, making this the best study Bible ever offered at any price. The Apostle Peter makes a bold call to all generations to be part of God's special forces team. We have done our very best to provide you with the most powerful sword of truth available. Now the decision is in your hands. Will you accept the challenge to become part of God's last day army? Equip yourself today. I appreciate the Remnant Bible, study Bible. Uh, I own one and I recommend it to others. I like the Ellen White comments on it. I like the, the way it's laid out and the illustrations in the back are especially good and the reference text. Uh, it is powerful because it's like having the conflict set with you. Uh, in the back there's an amazing study guide with all kinds of pictures uh, that you can see as well. Makes the Bible come alive. I recommend this to everybody. You've got to have it in your study. And again, if you want to make the spirit of prophecy and the Bible come together in a combination, there's nothing in the world like this Bible. You've got to get one. Now the decision is in your hands. Will you accept the challenge to become part of God's last day army? Equip yourself today. Well, I'm glad that you stayed with us. We're just getting started with Tom and Elaine's ministry, Restoration International, right? Correct. And, um, but we... Kind of got to Montana, and Tom, uh, I'll never forget that, you know, in my business, when I left you off in that 14 years, and then I talked to your parents, and they said you were selling real estate in, in Montana, but they never said, he's a Christian, and so it really bothered me, and I asked for your number, and I put it in my wallet, and then I forgot about it for about a month or two. Well, I had to take this trip out to California, and so I thought, well, you know what, maybe on the way back I could, I could stop and, and see you. I wanted to see you. And um, so I called you up and I asked if you remembered me. You remember that? Do you remember that? Oh, yes. <laughs> and that was back in maybe 80, I'm not sure, maybe 86, 87, somewhere in there. 
And, um, and we talked a little bit, and so I wanted to tell you the business. I was, had a secular business, and then, but I also had started running publications. So I wanted to, I didn't want to say, are you a Christian right now, I want Tom? to find out where I was. I wanted to know where you're at. <laughs> That's right. I, I, and so I want to be polite. And then you started telling me about what? I started telling you about a little ministry we were doing ourselves. <laughs> and I was so excited. And that ministry was? Yeah, Restoration International. And, and, and you know, it, pretty much the name tells what it is. But what, what is that? What are you doing? Well, our whole focus, uh, because of the work that God obviously did in those years yes. that we were apart and you were wondering about me, and I had to say I was wondering about you, too. <laughs> um, because of the work that God was doing in, in our hearts, we were very busy medical professionals. And uh, wouldn't you say we were very busy? Oh, yeah. We loved our children. We believed, like we talked about this first, that yes. our family should be our first mission field. But it wasn't in reality. And God really challenged us to a complete change of our lives. And it wasn't you didn't love your children. Oh. When you're saying those things, we loved our you children. loved them, but yes. somehow they got in the back. Burn. Yeah, well, and even people thought we had wonderful children. You know, yes. we're in this 1,300-member church, and... You know, I was an elder in personal ministries director, and she's, you know, working with the Sabbath school programs, and we're doing all these great things, doing Bible studies. Good things. Oh, very good People things. People's lives are changing. Yeah, and we, we recognize, though, this, there's got to be more to Christianity than this, because at the bottom of it all, I did not really know how to deal with the Christian life. I, I didn't have time for God, and I hate to say that, but, you know, I'm being honest, and some of you out there may understand this. I... I was telling people how to study the Bible. I told people what they needed to do, and I could give the right text and everything. But, you know, I'd jump out of bed. I like breakfast. Yes. So I didn't want to miss my breakfast. I'd jump out of bed, and I'd have about five minutes on my knees with my head spinning. Yes. Because I didn't slow down. Right. You know, now I know that it's, it says in, in Psalm 4610, be still and know. and know that I am God. I wasn't doing that. So who's God? I'm running my own life and I'm running off to work, and I'm running to do all these things, and I didn't have time for my, I really didn't have time for my marriage like I should have had. Didn't have time for the children. And God began calling to us that there, there's another way. Mm. And In other words, what you're kind of saying just, is that you knew about God. Oh, yeah. But you, you weren't walking with God. Yeah, I, I knew, and I knew God's power, and I tasted of it, and I believed in the Bible. I believed in prayer, but... I was really got to the place where we were so busy doing good things for God. Yes. We didn't have time for God. And that's where God challenged in the, us. In the practical. Yeah, day to day life. Because that's what, because <laughs> Deb and I were going through the same things at the same time. And we were finding the same thing. I tell people I could, you know, I was a head elder and, and on the church board, the church school board, mm -hmm. doing a Sabbath school class. And I could do a Bible study and then come home and yell at my wife. And Right. literally be upset and she really didn't do anything but and, and I was doing the same thing I'd, I'd memorize scripture I knew all the do's and the don'ts I loved the Lord I truly did I loved him with all my heart mind and soul but there was something missing and um, and so I knew about God I wasn't walking with God and I wanted that walk with God and that's what we we wanted that walk with God yes. and when God challenged us to sell our property leave our jobs. Mm. And you know about this, Dwight. A lot of I people know. don't know yeah. about this. <laughs> but when we did that 23 years ago, a lot of people thought we were crazy. Yeah. And when we actually left the suburbs of Chicago, we had a three-year-old son. Three-month-old. Uh, Three-month-old, three thank you. Our, our oldest daughter at that time was five, and, okay. and Emily was three. And it was a, it was a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. But we knew absolutely that God was calling us to do well, this. We had both, you both had good jobs. Yeah. Good medical benefits, good retirement. I mean, working at a hospital. I mean, to, to leave all that, of course people are going to think you're crazy. Yeah. And, th and the same thing happened to Deb and I when we left, sold our company. And, and uh, in fact, our pastor back then, <clears throat> a great godly man. But I was given a number of Bible studies, and I went to him for my problem. I couldn't put it together. Mm. And uh, he said, Dwight, really what you need is to give another Bible study. And I said, if I give another Bible study, I'm going to shoot somebody. <laughs> I mean, because it wasn't helping yeah. me with my mm -hmm. patience. And, yeah. and so that was you. And, and I, I remember when I called you and we were talking, you shared about your ministry. I sent you, I think, a set of our conflict series uh, from Remnant Publications to show you what we were doing. And you sent me a set of tapes. And on one of those tapes was uh, the title. It was about Noah building the ark. That's right. And... Um, 
my wife, Deb, and I, first, I listened to 